Thank you so much, uh, Joyet, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to the board chairman, Mr. Uton Bailey, to the principal or PTA president, counselor, teachers, staff, students, graduates of this noble institution, and, and parents as well. Uh, I consider it a great privilege to join in this. My first graduation service at Malden, I didn't have the privilege of graduating because at that time they never had um, such service. All I know is that next, next September I'm going to a different school. So I'm honored to cheer in this service and I want to say congratulations to all the graduates and the sky is the limit as you have been encouraged by, by others before. I have great memories of Malden Primary. I'm a proud um, alma um, graduate of Malden Primary. You know, I have good memories, sad memories, you know, playing on the hillside there, attending the classes. Mr. Russell, or, or well, he wasn't the principal at the time, but it was just a male grade six teacher but he played a key role in mentoring us as boys and one experience i had at malden i'll never forget one of my good friends kwame he died right there well he didn't die in a compound but he met in an accident there i remember that's that i'm not sure if the starple street is still in this in the schoolyard but we were picking starple one lunch time and kwame was the only one who climbed the tree but when he came down close to the end of lunchtime, no starple was left for him. Everybody came and, and took starple and none was left for him. So, so he told me to hold, to catch these ones for he's gonna go back into the tree to pick some more and I must keep them for him. And I was there picking up the starples for him. And one of the time I saw when I turned my back to pick up one. I saw somebody running towards, people just running towards the tree. And when I looked, when I turned around, I saw Kwame on the ground holding, you know, like this. And long and short of it is that he eventually died, sadly. I don't know what dreams he had for his life, but um, I'm grateful to be alive today. And I pray for his family. I also had memories of, um, of you know being able to pass common entrance and stuff like that quickly graduate if you don't mind and um i'm gonna ask you a question and i need, need your full participation i'm gonna put this on the screen just now i want you to go to this website um it is menti or oh, let, let me let me give you a better view of the instructions go to menti.com and type in the code 8416750 and then I want you to answer the question what do you want to be when you grow up you actually have three options you can just put in one but you have three options to to type there so please just quickly um, follow the instructions and good afternoon to you all good afternoon Lisa Henry Morrison and to all our hardworking teachers. All right, so students, I'm asking you to quickly go to this site. If you can see it on the screen, www.menti.com. Type in the code and participate. All right, while you're doing that, I'm going to continue. I hope you have, just write down the, the code so you can keep a note of it. All right, so today I'll be talking about um, aspiring to keep rising above the odds. Aspiring to keep rising above the odds. And, and I tell you, your, your generation is facing so many odds right now, you know, with the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, we have never seen this in, uh, in several generations. So, you know, you have challenges, but I'm happy that so many of you have made it out. Let's pray before we go into the presentation. Father in heaven, be with us. As we go into this presentation, be with each student, um, graduate, bless them and their parents and teachers, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, 
There are several lessons that I want to share with you from the story of Joseph. The story of Joseph, aspiring to keep rising above the others, lessons from the life of Joseph. And I see some of you participating in the, in the, in the um, survey. Please keep typing in your, your response. Lesson number one, and I know I have a short time, so I'm going to go right into it. Lesson number one from the life of Joseph is that Joseph was not afraid to embrace the dream that God had for his life, even though the dream was bigger than his current situation. It was unimaginable. What was that dream? Joseph dreamt that um, he would one day become a ruler. His, his parents and his siblings would one day bow down to him. That was his dream that God gave to him. And uh, as I said, it was impossible because Joseph was the youngest brother. And in those days, in terms of rank, it would start from the older brother and go down. So Joseph would be the last one on the list but this was a dream that god gave to him and he embraced it you know joseph was the kind of person who adopts the the philosophy that i have for myself where it's um that says there is no limit to the usefulness of one who by putting self aside make room for the working of the holy spirit in his heart and lives a life wholly consecrated to God. Though it seemed impractical and impossible, Joseph was not afraid to accept God's dream for his life. For me, at an early age, I knew that God had a special purpose for my life, but um, I never understood it. You know, I was one of those persons who I actually skipped skip grade 5 and I took the common entrance at age 10 and passed it the first time. So I went to high school while I was like about age 11. But I remember the days of going to Montego Bay with only my bus fare to go, <laughs> you know, and um, no lunch money and stuff like that. So my mother struggled. My mother had six children and she adopted two more. So, you know, I was thinking about it this morning to say she's probably the, the one who sent most children to Marlin Primary because I think she sent about nine children, six of her own and three others, to Marlin Primary. So, but from, that, from those times, I knew God had a special plan for my life. But how it was going to be accomplished, the circumstances that surrounded me did not indicate it was possible. But with God, all things are possible. So I was talk about dream. I want to post some of the responses that I've gotten so far. Um, some of you said you want to be a nurse. Some said I want to be a soldier. At least two persons said soldier. Some person said flight attendant. Um, some one person said food. I'm not sure what that is. One person said pediatrician and so on. Just keep them coming, please. Keep them coming. What do you want to be when you grow up? The second lesson that um, Joseph would learn, or we can learn from the life of Joseph, is that the road to success is a difficult one. The road to success is a difficult one. In other words, the process by which God works to accomplish his dream in our lives is not a smooth one. And Joseph would soon learn that, that we don't become great by merely dreaming about it. There comes a time when we have to roll up our sleeves and face the music in terms of problems. And listen to this. The fact that God has a big dream and big plan for your life doesn't mean it will come smoothly. You know, um, the call to greatness is not a call to a life of ease and freedom from responsibility. As one of my favorite authors says um, in this book, Helping Daily Living, Trials and obstacles are the Lord's chosen methods of discipline and his appointed conditions of success. <laughs> you know, many times I tell you, I'm going to be honest with you, I, I, I look back and I literally cry because 
I'm saying, God, you were the one who saw me growing up in Maroon Town. And yes, um, Lisa in Woodland, you know, roaming about, playing football, cricket, going to a river and stuff like that, having no care in this life. But God saw that he wanted a pastor. He wanted a minister of the gospel. He wanted a professor. And he would take his time to mold my life to what it become today. But I can tell you, it is not an easy road. It is not a, a smooth road. And Joseph had to learn that as well because the time came when Joseph's brothers did not only hate him, but they wanted to kill him. Matter of fact, when they sold him into slavery, the Bible tells us that their intention was, was expressed in this way. They said to themselves, and the Bible records it, let us see what will, be, what will become of his dreams. You know, let's see what will become of his dreams. That was their intention. Their intention was to destroy his dreams or the dreams that God gave to him. And I've seen unfortunately, that there are several persons who I attended more than with who had potential but um, did not get to realize the dream that God had for them. Because sometimes we take for granted what it takes to, to overcome all the obstacles. As I said, they eventually sold Joseph into slavery. And can you imagine a little boy, a young boy at about age 17, leaving his the comfort of his home into a strange land where nobody knew him more, more so being a servant so lesson number three in Joseph's experience that we can learn from is that Joseph valued his relationship with God above his dreams Joseph valued his relationship with God above his dreams why do I say that? Because when Joseph was sold into slavery, you could say Joseph could have easily given up on his, on his dreams. Joseph could have easily given up on the God of his fathers and say, listen, I am not in a strange land. I don't, I don't have to worship God. I don't have to be faithful to God. Because all this dream of a bright future has now come to naught. No more dreams about a bright future no more dreams about being a ruler anymore. All this came tumbling down, apparently, when his brothers sold him into slavery. But when his dreams, and listen to this carefully now, when his dreams appeared to fail, Joseph still held on to God just the same. And the reason I'm saying this is because Oftentimes, when we get the prospect or when we face the prospect of a great future, sometimes we can lose focus. We can become, we can reach a point where we begin to focus on the dream more than our focus on God. And so everything becomes now making sure that this dream becomes a reality and, and we start to bend the rules. We start to compromise on principle and we start to um, do stuff that we would not normally do. But our goal is to make sure the dream becomes a reality. No, God is saying, focus on me because I'm the one who gave you the dream. So um, if, if one dream appears to fail, I can give you more dream where that one comes from. So we need, to, uh, we need to follow what Joseph's example in being faithful to God are being more faithful to God than our dreams. I've, I have faced that temptation several times. When, you know, I left, when I left college, it, it, things appeared not to be working out, but I still remain faithful to God. Now, it was his faithfulness to God that led Joseph to fulfill lesson number four. And I'm coming down, I'm talking about eight lessons. And that is faithfulness in little things prepares you for greatness or prepares you to be great in the greater, greater things. What do I mean by that? We are to be faithful in the small duties of life, even when it may not appear to bring us greatness. We must not be willing only to do those things that others will praise us for, 
but you must be willing to do things even when known to do things right even when no one is watching even when it doesn't promise that it's going to bring any greatness we must be willing to do it and and that's what joseph did joseph was so faithful in his duties even as a prisoner so that potiphar promoted him and make him ruler over his house because the bible tells us in proverbs 22 and verse 29 Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. And I have faced that experience as well. I've realized, for example, when I, when I left college for the first time and got a job in a printery, I had to be collating papers all day and doing menial jobs. And I was sometimes complaining and wondering, Lord, is this the purpose you have for me? I, I thought you had a big dream for me. But I realized today that that experience of working in a printry has helped to build me and make me the person I am today. So we, we need to learn to be faithful in the little duties of life. Lesson number five. Lesson number five is that Joseph learned that character is everything. Joseph learned that character is everything. In other words, being, doing what is right is more important than being um, popular. Doing what is right is more important than being popular because here it is that in Joseph's case, while he was being faithful in Potiphar's house, he was tempted by Potiphar's wife. But the Bible tells us that Joseph says, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against my God? The point is, young people, when you are climbing the ladder of success, temptations will come. It may not be temptation about um, sex. It can be temptation with money, where persons try to get you into, into activities that are illegal because they can get you rich quick and stuff like that. But you have to remember that character is the true foundation to greatness. I could go deeper into that, but, I, but the time is running. I want to I wanna share one of my favorite quotations here that says, The greatest want of the world is the want of men. Men who will not be bought or sold. Men who in their inmost souls are true and honest. Men who do not fear to call sin by its right name. Men whose conscience is as true to duty as a needle to the pole. Men who will stand up for right though the heavens fall. That is what makes you truly great. That you can stand for principle even when tested. Coming down now, lesson number six. Lesson number six is that Joseph learned that in the path to success, Life is not fear. <laughs> you know, um, this, is, this for me is one of the most important lessons that a person who is going to be successful can learn. Because oftentimes we think that, you know, if, if, if we are honest, if we are hardworking, if, if we do well, then people are going to love us and people are just going to want to see us succeed. The reality is no, that is not necessarily true. You can be faithful in your work. You can be honest in your work. You can do well. And at the end of the day, anybody who experienced success can tell you that people will still hate you. A matter of fact, it is when you become successful that people become envious and covetous and all manner of um, things. Because, and, and, they will, and they will do things to hurt you. And Joseph experienced that because when Potiphar's wife approached him and he said no, she told a lie on him and because of that lie, he went into prison again. And so Joseph learned this important lesson that life is not fear, but you can still press forward because life doesn't have to be fear for you to be successful. Let me repeat that. Life does not have to be fear for you to be successful. What you need is the presence of God and a willingness to press on in adversity. Because Joseph in prison, I can, I can imagine, he would have been very disappointed. 
he would have cried tears. You know, he would have looked at himself and said, boy, look how I was faithful. Look how, look how well I was doing. And, and here this woman come and tell a lie on me. But then one morning he would get up and brush off himself and say, you know, I'm going to stop crying. I am going to be the best prisoner. I'm going to be the best that I can where I am right now. And that's what Joseph did. And God um, brought him success. The, the penultimate lesson, lesson number seven, is that Joseph learned <clears throat> that God is faithful to his promise. Those who wait upon him will realize their dreams. And God is, God is faithful to his promises. That's lesson number seven. In other words, in other words, when the Bible says in Matthew 6 and verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I am a living testimony that this promise is true. It has been, um, I was counting a number of years now, it is 31 years since I left Marlin Primary. <laughs> I know, and when I left Marlin Primary, it was only a promise. But, a matter of fact, that same year is when I got baptized and gave my heart to the Lord in 1990. And I've, and I've come to realize that it may take long, but God is going to fulfill his promise to you if you remain faithful to him. It took long for Joseph. It took long for Moses. It took 80 years. But it will become a reality. One day, Joseph, who was sold into slavery, Joseph, who was lied on by Potiphar's wife, sorry, he became the most powerful man in Egypt besides Pharaoh because God gave him a dream. God gave him a dream that only he could interpret. He, uh, sorry, he gave, he gave Pharaoh a dream that only Joseph could interpret. And so God exalted Joseph to the point where his brothers had to come and bow before him. And his dream became a reality. So I'm, I'm saying to somebody here today, and I'm going to put again on the screen. Some of you are saying you want to be a lawyer. You want to be a teacher. You want to be a health educator. You want to be a doctor, a pastor. Very good. Excellent. A nurse. I, I, I commend you. I say, dream on. Embrace the dream that God has for you because one day it is going to become a reality if you are willing to wait on God and if you are willing to aspire and keep rising against the odds. And finally, the final lesson that Joseph would learn is that Joseph learned to forgive his brothers. In other words, Joseph learned to see all the troubles that he went through as the working of God. And that's why he was able to say to his brothers in Genesis 45, it says, Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry at yourselves, that you sold me here. For God did send me before to preserve life. For these two years had the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years more in which you shall neither be hearing nor, nor harvest. And God sent me before you, before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. What am I saying here? Joseph could have spent his life complaining that he faced too much hardship to be successful. Joseph's story, Joseph's story could have been written a different way. He could, he could have said, listen, boy, you know, when I was young, they sold me into slavery. When I, when I tried to do something good, they told lie on me. That could be his story. And I tell you, there are some people right now in life, that is their story. There are several people you will pass on the street side. You'll see them in different places. And all the story they have is that people have been unfair to them but and and, they, they, and that's why they are not successful but joseph was able to see the hand of god even in his adversity and that's why he was able to overcome to aspire 
in spite of the odds. And that's what I want to say to a young man, young boy or young girl who is graduating today. Embrace the dream that God has placed on your heart. Don't be afraid of difficulties. Be faithful in the small duties of life. Put God first in your life. Let character be your greatest aim. And the Bible says, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he will bless you. He will add all things unto you. And this is my prayer for you in Jesus' name. I wish you success and God's richest blessing as you go on into the future, embracing God's dream for your life. God bless you and thank you for your participation.